What up, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. The Dodgers made the big trade for Craig Kimbrell today. But how will the rest of the Dodgers bullpen look? We have an interview with Alex Vess, who we're going to dive into in just a second. But quick reminder for all the latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you're going to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. It really helps out the channel. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Is this the best Dodgers bullpen that you can remember as far as depth goes? And how high are you on Alex Vesia? On a scale of 1 to 10, how high are you on Vesia? Let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So, of course, the big news today is the Dodgers traded for Craig Kimbrell. When they did that, that changed the complexion of this Dodgers bullpen because Dave Roberts, he had talked about going closer by committee and playing the matchups and seeing Daniel Hudson and Blake Trine and possibly Bruce Dark Gratterall gain the final three outs. Well, now you have a true closer in Craig Kimbrell. He is hoping to be lights out for the Dodgers and pick up where he left off the last time he was in a closer's role with the Chicago Cubs. He was post posting a .49 ERA through the first four months of the season. But what adding Kimbrell does is it lengthens the depth of this Dodgers bullpen. Looking at it right now, you look at some of those frontline guys. David Price, he looks sharp in his first spring work a few days ago. You got Tyler Anderson. He's a guy that was a starter. They can give you multiple innings of relief. You got Victor Gonzalez, a lefty that's hoping to have a big bounce back year after being lights out in 2020. He was nails for the Dodgers. Dodgers. Then he had a down year last year. He's coming to camp. He looks great physically. Hopefully, he can find it this season. Justin Brule. Then you got Bruce Dark Gratterall, Daniel Hudson. You got Blake Trinan. And then there's Evan Phillips. And then we'll see what happens as far as the Dodgers starting rotation. What happens with Trevor Bauer? Will they trade for another starter? Because if they do that, will you see someone like Andrew Heaney or Tony Gonson go into that Dodgers bullpen? So this bullpen has so much depth to it and it could increase as the season and progresses. And then today we're going to spotlight Alex Vesia because Alex Vesia is a guy that really emerged last season. He was lethal for the Dodgers after they called him back up from OKC. He was practically untouchable for the rest of the way. And then if you also look at guys like Tommy Canely who they expect to see back. You've got Danny Duffy who is supposed to be back by the middle of the season towards the All-Star break. Dustin May could be back after the All-Star break in August and he will fit in that Dodgers bullpen give you a few innings of relief and then of course Phil Bigford is hoping to come back earlier than any of those guys so hopefully Phil Bigford Mr. Rubber on from last year he can come in and pick up where he left off last season when he was really getting it done for the Dodgers becoming one of their more dependable relievers so a lot has been made about the Dodgers devastating lineup after they signed Freddie Freeman but now this is on paper one of the deepest Dodgers bullpens in franchise history you have guys that can miss bats you have guys Guys, lefties, righties, you have guys that can give you multiple innings of relief, and then now you add Craig Kimbrell, and then that keeps Blake Trine in there as that setup man in a role that he excels at. So yes, I am a proponent of the closer by committee approach, but all bets are off when you are able to acquire a player of Craig Kimbrell's caliber. I think when you consider that it is for one season, and then next year you kind of make the transition to a closer by committee approach, we'll see the development of Bruce Dark Ratterall. But today we're going to spotlight Alex Vesia. I was at Dodgers spring training last week and I caught up with Alex Vesia. And this was right before the media was supposed to leave. So I kind of rushed this one in, got as many questions in as I could. You got guys playing ping pong in the background. So come for the Alex Vesia interview. Stay for the ping pong in the Dodgers clubhouse. So like I always say, don't mess you with Vesia. He's the real deal. and He's really becoming a Dodgers fan favorite. I love his demeanor on the mound. I love his passion, his electricity, and fans are going to continue to fall in love with him this season. But here's my quick interview with Dodgers left-handed reliever Alex Vesia. All right, we're here Alex Vesia. Alex, first I got to ask you, how you feeling this spring? Doing great. Yeah, man, it's been, it's been fun. Had a lot, of, a lot of good times with the guys already. Yeah. Do you think the shortened kind of like to the quick, all of a sudden the lockout ends, you guys are showing up, has that affected you at all? 
Um, not necessarily. I felt like I've come in pretty prepared, and you know they've they've done a good job of making sure we're on schedule and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, because we saw. I mean, pretty much went pretty viral. You were throwing a high school kids. Do you think that you're more ready now because you did that? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I felt like uh, I had to kind of get out of my rut of doing like, just throwing every day, kind of yeah. around the area. So yeah, it's been it was fun. Last season, you said you fully embraced being a Dodger. And what, did, what do you mean by that? Just uh, atmosphere, all the, the challenges, everything that uh, it, you know, everything that the Dodgers organization brings. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm embracing it. So awesome, yeah. man. You emerged as you know one of the team's high levers, left-handed relievers. You once you came back from from OKC, you were just lights out. You were untouchable. You got a stint in the postseason. How big was last year as far as you personally? Just how much you accomplished and heading into the season? Is that momentum carrying over into the spring? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It's been, it's been, like I said, it was a lot of fun. I felt like I grew a lot as a, as a person, as a teammate. Um, just, you know, I, I got comfortable being, you know, myself out there on the mound and, and, uh, you know, I think it, it showed and yeah. yeah. I mean, how much credit do you give all the coaching here at the Dodgers for your development? A lot, a lot. They helped me, you know, big time. You know, if it wasn't for them, I definitely wouldn't be in this position and I, you know, give a big shout out to them for helping me with mechanics and, and design and all that stuff. It's been great. Awesome, Andrew. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Best of luck this season, Alex. Take it easy, man. Alex Vesia really emerged as a star left-handed reliever for the Dodgers in the second half of last season. Of course, there was a lot of talk about Vesia after Andrew Friedman and the Dodgers. They traded for him. They trade away Dylan Floro for Alex Vesia and minor leaguer Kyle Hurd. And early on, it did not look so good for Alex Vesia. Didn't even make the opening day roster. If you look at his spring training numbers, he had 10 punch outs and five and two thirds innings of work. He posted a 4.76 ERA an 1141 whip and after his underwhelming spring you had a lot of Dodger fans questioning the move to trade Dylan Floro for the unproven Vesia and then when he got called up in early May he really struggled out of the gates in his first appearance with LA he gave up four runs had four walks and just one inning of work in the Dodgers extra innings loss to the Milwaukee Brewers and if you look at his numbers for that month of May in 10 games he posted a 591 ERA a 720 fib had 11 walks in 10 and two-thirds innings of work, but he did have just a 114 opponent's batting average. So with him, it was about the command issues. He couldn't find the plate at times, but he did flash some electric stuff. He's got a lot of life on that heater, and you saw the potential in him, and the Dodgers, they did send him down to OKC, refine his mechanics a little bit. They worked on his control issues, and he shoved in AAA. He had 19 punch outs in just nine innings of work, had 15 strikeouts in a row at one point and after he was called up by the Dodgers in July, he was practically lights out for the remainder of the season. He posted a .92 ERA, a .82 whip, had a 3.14 FIP, a 3.97 X FIP, a 3.14 Sierra, a 33.6 K percentage, which led the Dodgers in that stretch, a 9.7 walk percentage, and a 129 opponent's batting average. In his final 29 and a third innings of work, he appeared in 31 games, and then the postseason he proved to be a weapon as well. He posted a 2.08 ERA in four and a third innings of work, had seven strikeouts and three walks, gave up just one run in seven appearances. You want to see that strikeout number go a little up like we saw in the regular season, but what a great start for his Dodger career. Still young, still getting better. But let me know down below in the comment section on a scale of one to ten, how high are you on Alex Vest yet? And is this on paper the deepest Dodgers bullpen that you can remember? Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.